Hi, this is Tavis Piatoli, sports dietitian with the company My Sports Dietitian, and this is our section on role of protein for performance, how to choose your best options. So to get started, just like we do with our last couple of sections on carbohydrate and fat, first thing I want to kind of cover is just really what are the nutrition myths that surround protein. One of the biggest misconceptions, particularly around young athletes today, is they think if they eat more protein, just by eating more protein, they're going to build more muscle. And this is completely false. We do need that stimulus of strength training. We need that environment that will help create that stimulus, followed by consuming adequate amounts of protein throughout the day. One of the, Another myth is you can only get good sources of protein by eating meat. And there's a lot of vegetarians that uh, are very lean, uh, that perform at a high level. And you don't need to just eat animal-based protein in order to get protein. Yes, that they do have some of your best sources of protein, but those are not by far always the best options that you can consume. And you don't have to just eat animal-based proteins. If you're a vegetarian, there's plenty of options for you to choose outside of an animal-based protein. Uh, another is following a vegan or vegetarian-based diet will make it difficult for me to build muscle. And this is actually, again, not the case. There are a lot of opportunity to get protein outside of just animal-based diets. Things like beans, nuts, peanut butter, quinoa, soy, uh, tofu. There's a lot of options that we can consume outside of animal-based options uh, and still be very effective. It's also best to get your protein all uh, in one or two meals. That's a big misconception as well. It's really best, based on the science and literature, to spread your protein out throughout the day. The best way to, ma to maximize um, or at least have what's called a net protein balance at the end of the day in, in a crew muscle tissue uh, is to make sure we spread protein out. So let's just say you need 200 grams. Uh, you want to make sure you consume maybe five or six meals with 40 to 50 grams each or 35 to 40 grams each. That way we're not trying to consume that all in one because it's going to be very difficult for the body to break that down. Also, there's another misconception where people think if you eat too much protein, it's just going to harm your kidneys. If you have issues with kidney failure or have some kidney problems or a history of kidney disease, you definitely want to check with your doctor first. But if you have healthy kidneys, adding extra protein is not going to cause any harm. And there's a ton of literature to support that. And finally, more protein equals more energy. This is not necessarily the case. If your body is using protein for energy, more than likely you're, in a low, you're following a very low-carbohydrate diet. And this is something that is not advocated for wrestlers especially. Uh, because the lack of energy. If anything that increases our energy, it's making sure we get good carbohydrate intake to support the amount of activity our body's going to do. All right, so let's talk about the function of protein. What, what does protein do? It's a pretty versatile nutrient. It uh, has a lot of different functions. We'll talk about a couple just right here that is really beneficial, especially when it comes to the athlete. Number one, repair and maintenance. So great foundation for skin, hair, muscles, and organs. It's uh, all of those All of those. Uh, are made up of protein. Young athletes need more than adults, especially during our growing phases. So, you know, if you're a 13 to 14 year old wrestler, this is, you know, we'll talk about how much protein our body needs, but this is where we need a little bit more protein because we need that for growth. As you can see, things like skin, hair, and muscles, particularly our muscles and organs, are, are better off when we get adequate protein. And of course, connective tissue repair and reco recovery. So, you know, when, when we have these minor tears or injuries or you know, muscle soreness, Protein is extremely beneficial post-workout to really help with the muscle recovery process that can, and also the connective tissue repair process. So we want to make sure after a workout within 20, 30 minutes, we get protein uh, immediately after because that increases muscle protein synthesis or the rebuilding of muscle tissue. Also with hormone balance, things like insulin. You know, people think of insulin as only something that you take to lower your blood sugar. It's also an anabolic hormone, and it's a protein that regulates blood sugar. So that is true, but it also helps shuttle protein to the muscle for recovery. So when you consume protein after a workout, you want that with a source of carbohydrate. You just don't want to consume a scoop of protein powder with water. You want that with maybe some milk, some fruit, some, some sort of carbohydrate source. That's going to increase protein uptake to that muscle tissue and help that muscle tissue recover faster. Also immune health. Uh, one of the things people don't realize is when we eat adequate protein, it helps with our immune system. There are antibodies that are protein in a component of our immune system, which helps fight infections that are caused by bacteria and viruses. So when we train a lot, we, we're more susceptible to getting sick. So if we're not eating a really good diet, a good diet, of course, of lean protein, fruits and veggies, which also help reduce inflammation, 
then we put ourselves at risk and we become more susceptible to getting sick. So good protein intake produces more antibodies, keeping our immune system strong. And finally, metabolism and body composition. One of the goals of a wrestler is to get leaner, to get stronger. Uh, the benefit of having a source of protein at all your meals, number one, is the thermic effect of food. It takes 30% more energy for the body to break down protein than it does carbs and fat, so it improves the metabolism. It increases our metabolic rate. It also keeps you full a little bit longer. So if you're trying to manage your weight, it's important to have foods that control blood sugar, that make sure that if we eat in an hour, and two hours later, an hour later, we're not hungry again because we're not eating the right balance of nutrients. So this is where protein comes in and it's important to have at all of the meals. So let's really talk about, as you've seen in the last couple of presentations on fat and carbohydrate, we kind of give you guys at least a little bit of understanding of what's good protein. And as we've done before, what's state championship protein like we did with carbs and fat? These are going to be things that are good lean sources, chicken breast, turkey breast, deli, ham, lean ground beef or extra lean ground beef, certain cuts of beef like sirloin filet, eye of round, and as you can see, fish and whey protein. And So there's some animal-based options. There are some uh, vegetarian-based options as well that we can have. What we, what I would consider missed a playoff protein, these are protein-based sources that are a lot higher in fat. Uh, you know, these are things that take a long time to digest. So you combine good protein and high, high fat, uh, then it's going to take a long time to digest. You want to avoid these eight to ten hours before a match, especially before, right before a match, because they're going to make you feel really, really sluggish, and you're not going to feel very good. So these are fast food hamburgers and fried foods, like fried chicken, fast food beef, or dark meat chicken. Things are going to have considerably higher amounts of fat and take a long time to digest. All right, so the big question we get is how much protein? And, you know, for the rest of it's really – we like to give a range just to say eat this is not going to apply to every single person. But a good range is about 0.7 to 1 gram per pound. Um, a lot of things are going to really determine. I like to use the upper end when trying to cut weight and hold on to muscle tissue just because you're probably going to be cutting carbs a little bit in those areas when we're trying to drop weight. Uh, we're cutting calories, but we want to make sure protein stays adequate so we don't lose muscle tissue during that time. Uh, so let's just say you're 150 pounds, and you multiply that times 0.7 or, or 1. That's going to be a range between 105 and 150 grams of protein. You know, one way to look at this is for every ounce, so you're like, well, how, how much is that? For every ounce of protein is 7 grams. So one ounce of protein is 7 grams. A deck of cards would be about 3 ounces. That's about 21 grams of protein. All right, so a lot, I get a lot of questions about protein powder. It's like, so how do we know what's a good powder? Should I use that? What's the function of this? Uh, sometimes this is a convenient way to get protein, uh, and it's a good, it's something that can be done. It's not really that much different than, you know, eating a piece of chicken or fish or steak. It's just it's in a powdered form. It's just like milk or, you know, it's it comes from cheese. So we have whey protein. Fast-acting protein that raises the blood amino acid levels pretty quickly that lasts for about three to four hours. This is really great to have whey protein immediately after a workout, stimulating muscle protein synthesis pretty quickly. Some athletes I, I know like to use casein protein, and that's completely fine. This is a slower-acting protein and elevates the blood amino acid levels for up to six hours. I would typically recommend a casein or maybe even a whey casein blend before bed. You can use a blend after a workout. You can use a whey after a workout. It's all going to work. You know, maybe whey is going to be a little bit more effective. But overall, you know, if you're having, you know, either one of these proteins after workout, they're both going to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and help repair. Now, the big question, too, is well, how much is the effect of after workout? Well, the science has shown us that around 20 to 30 grams is sufficient to optimize muscle protein synthesis. Uh, basically repairing that muscle tissue. That's about a scoop to a scoop and a half of protein powder. That should be plenty enough. Uh, you mix that with whether, you know, with milk, you're adding more protein. So if you wanted to do a scoop with a little bit of milk, you're going to get 28, 30 grams of protein in that serving. And that's, that should be pretty, pretty beneficial when it comes to maximizing muscle recovery. Uh, remember, adding carbohydrates to that is, is good. One thing I like to do is I like to take vanilla protein for my athletes and, and mix it with cherry juice. The cherry juice has a good anti-inflammatory effect. You get some carbs, maybe with a piece of fruit, and then also a scoop of protein powder. All right, so one of the things we want to discuss, too, is when you're choosing a protein powder, you want to make sure it's third-party tested. You just don't want to choose any protein powder you buy it off the shelf because, you know, it becomes pretty cheap and you're not getting good quality protein. 
So number one, 25% of protein powders that were tested by a third-party company contained steroids. And that's what they looked at, 58 different protein powders. 11% had stimulants on them not listed on the label or in them not listed on the label. So I'm a big fan of using the NSF Sport or NSF app as well as their website. If you go to nsfsport.com, you can see the arrow there that says you click on certified products. And from there, you would click on protein. They have many other options from multivitamins to fish oil. But we're just talking about protein right now. So you'd click on protein or bring that arrow down to, to click on protein. And then this is just a, the first part of the page. And you'll see a ton of different options as you scroll down. You won't be able to scroll down here, but on their website, you can scroll down and see all the different brands, the lot numbers, the company, and who the contact person would be if you have questions about that product. So it's important especially if collegiate athletes and professional athletes, they use NSF for sports certified products. What that means is these products have no banned substances. They've been third-party tested. They've been analyzed by a lab, and it helps them stay clean and in the game so they don't use lose a year of eligibility at the collegiate level or above. As always, anytime you guys have questions, you can email me at tpiatoli at mysportsd.com. Our next topic, topic number nine, is going to be the 80-20 rule of balanced nutrition. Really how it's important, you know, I don't believe in eliminating any food, so I think it's important if you, you know, to have a balanced diet, you eat well 80% of the time, you eat what you want the other 20% of the time. So we'll talk about that. Uh, again, if you want to visit MyWrestlingNutrition.com, you can pick up Clint's ebook, Performance Nutrition for Wrestlers. It is by far the best piece of information when it comes to nutrition for wrestlers out there right now. There's not anything like it remotely close. And you have one of the best sports dietitians, particularly, in my opinion, the best when it comes to the topic of wrestling uh, available. And always check out our website at www.mysportsdeconnect.com. A lot of great information uh, when it comes to nutrition education for the athlete, coach, parent, anyone involved with the development of athletes. Thanks again for spending time with us, and we'll see you in topic number nine.